So Robin Black, a uh, self-described analyst of human movement, I believe, is, is like you know, trying to become the busiest man in the game right now. And here's how I'll describe you. I will say the most high-profile addition to the Karate Combat team. I know they brought in George St. Pierre. I know they brought oh, in Leo Cheetah. But what, I mean, what have they really accomplished in their careers compared <laughs> to you, sir? Uh, oh, God, that's funny. That's funny. I like that. I'm going to say that to George and Leoto, and of course I can't say it with a straight face, but but uh, yeah, man, like I got a lot of t-shirts that I get to wear now, and Bradley, like you said, like I'm doing a lot of wild stuff. You know, I could have put on my Bellator shirt, which I like wearing. Uh, you know, I could put on Jorge Masvidal's shirt. I just did that. Uh, but yeah, Karate Combat's a cool one, man. Right now I'm, I'm so into... Like I'm at the stage, if you love wine or whatever, like music, it doesn't matter. Let's say wine. And, you know, you come up and you like red wine or white wine. And then you like wine from different regions. And then you like wine of different eras. And then you like wine with different notes. That's where I'm at with fighting right now. I like it to have different flavors and textures and and identities and cultures. And uh, this is a cool one. Karate Combat's a cool one. That's awesome. Yeah, let's talk about that. We're, we're going to talk about everything because, as you said, you are so busy. But season three of Karate Combat kicks off mm. July 1st on CBS Sports Network. Um, I, I got a chance to attend one of the tapings before uh, mm. in, in Los Angeles. It was really cool. I've obviously seen the product. Um, it's, a, it's a striking only rule set, of course, as you would imagine, with a name like yeah. Karate Combat. Unique mm. fighting area, uh, kind of the, the pit, if you will, that, that, that they're down in. Um, but Give me the pitch. I mean, if somebody hasn't seen Karate yeah. Combat, you being a combat sports expert, mm -hmm. how would you describe it? What's the, what's the pitch? What, what, what is it about it that's that's so uh, intriguing to you? Well, there's a lot for me. There's a lot. One is its artistry, right? You know, it is martial artistry. Um, all fighting, um, like all things, but but fighting is what it looks like, how it's expressed, how two martial artists do combat really is dictated around all of those variables. The rules, the fighting surface, the, the length of time, what you can and cannot do, right? And in karate combat, you can punch, you can kick. Um, from the outside, you can target the calf, but there's certain areas of the body they allow you to target and certain ones they don't. We are used to, we do a lot of MMA, so we think we are currently that MMA is the anything goes. But in the world of martial arts, it really isn't. It's just this particular collection. And how you col how you allow certain targets and certain techniques creates the art. And this is a particularly flavorful art because of that. You know, old school kickboxing, you could kick the body only and the head, but you couldn't kick the legs. In this one, you can. You can kick the calves, but not the thighs. Sounds weird to somebody who's used to Muay Thai. But once you see it artistically expressed, it changes the ranges and the timing and the rhythm and the structure and the texture and the change changes all of that and makes a particularly artful fighting. Yeah, that's what I'm curious about is, is what type of athlete you think is is successful here and, and how many of them there are available, right? Because as you said, it is, it's 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 a refined rule set. It's a little bit different approach. As you said, it's got it's got a little bit different rhythm. It's got a little bit different spacing. And so I just wonder, you know, can an MMA athlete succeed there? Should we be looking at Muay Thai mm. fighters or or is it really just the traditional karateka that's that's going to be successful in this organization? So I'm not always sure. It's it's coming together really quickly. We have shot little bits and pieces. I shot a thing with Leota Machida. It's in the trailer. And, you know, we've done some of it. So I'm not sure exactly what's fully announced, but say Ross Levine, right? Turbo Ross Levine had knockout of the year last year or the year before at Glory. Uh, he grew up as a full contact karate fighter, which in America is still different than full contact karate in Europe. Uh, he fought Muay Thai. He, I think, has done some MMA, certainly trains it and, and rolls and, and spars in it. Um, he's fighting. So we will get to see some of those. And a guy like Ross will suddenly, other guys who came up and competed in these other areas will suddenly want to be fighting as well. It's, it is fascinating. You bring up a really interesting point um, because what we think of now is an MMA athlete to a great degree is very sport structured oriented. And sometimes that's really good. Uriah Faber coming up could defeat a lot of guys who are like very martial arty, but that doesn't last forever. Then later, very athlete oriented, very sport oriented guys start getting exploited. So Sugar Sean is, is a flowy guy. He didn't win one fight where he got his, his calf kicked off. But when he is, he's being more of an artist than he is an athlete. Although of course he's a great athlete. So this, 
this sort of encourages the artistic elements of it. And again, that isn't somehow better, worse, less, more than uh, MMA or Muay Thai. It's just very, very different, like different flavors of wine. And, and wine connoisseurs want different flavors. Martial arts connoisseurs, like myself, like yourself, we want different flavors, right? We want different aspects to it. This one's certainly different. And the, yeah, it's a cool one, man. It's one of the coolest things I've been involved with for sure. That's awesome. And I know you're more analyzing uh, the actual martial arts that's happening as well, but they've done a pretty cool thing with their broadcasts also. What, 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 do you, what can you tell us about the whole CGI madness? Yeah. What, is, what does that add to it for you? I mean, do you, do you enjoy the presentation? Yeah, it's cool. So season two is at karate.com. And if you go and check that out and you dig it, well, great. Uh, but this is far beyond that. Right, like this is far beyond that. The fights take place. I can't give it all, all away, and I don't know it all either, which is very cool. But the fights take place in a green screen, and then now highly advanced animations are there. If you watch the trailer, you know Boss Rutten is traveling through time to show up, you know, in Okinawa or Hollywood, uh, where the fights are. And friends of a lot of people are asking me about it, and they're like, okay. The fights are real, right? I'm like, yes, the fights are real. <laughs> so what about what about the story elements? All of this, I mean, without being disrespectful to anybody who's doing anything, you know, fighting's a fighting show has kind of been the same for the last 20 years. And a kind of an extension of the 50 years before it, you know, uh, you create, we're here at this arena, home of this place, two epic warriors tonight. In the main event, we got these two guys, striker versus grappler, stylistic matchup. Who's going, we have the shot, the two guys walk out. Oh guys, we had an epic one here. We, we do the introduction. Like it's the same, the same, the same, the same, the same, the same, the same. We could change the angle slightly. We can light it kind of different. It's kind of the same formula over and over for a long time. And that's not because it's the best way to do it. It's because someone started doing it that way. And the nature of production is to emulate formulas. And here we are in 2021. We still call it the tail of the tape. Can you imagine the guy who came up with that term in 1953? If he knew that we still did that today, he'd be shocked, right? Um, and that's, not, again, I love fighting. Like, I mean, I love Friday night's Bellator show. Bellator's doing new things. They're innovating and stuff. But I like this weird one too. And when I say weird, I say it as somebody who loves, is weird and loves weird. <laughs> I like this aspect of it. And it's, you know, you can get in and out in an hour and, and 30 minutes with all of that. It's cool, man. You're going to dig it. You're going to, I'm not in the first couple episodes. Uh, so I'm just going to, uh, to watch um, but, uh, but it's pretty cool. People, right. some people probably hate it. But I think a lot of people are going to dig it. I refuse to watch the first few episodes then. That's all there is to it. I'm just refusing to watch the first <laughs> yeah, few. No, right. no, 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 I'm just kidding. Yeah. Well, wait, make the pitch. <laughs> Tell us what we do need to do. What, what do we need to know about season three and make the pitch? As you know, our audience, mostly MMA fans, they, they might not you know, know that they even like this. So what would be, would be your pitch to an MMA fan as to why they should tune in and watch this and what details they need to know? So I think especially, I mean, when we came up, we, what did we like about MMA? It was different. It was outside the mainstream. It was non-corporate. It was edgy. Uh, it was new. It had a different flavor and language and presentation. Uh, if you like that, there's nothing wrong with the fact that MMA is kind of the corporate mainstream right now. That's cool. We like it. We, we make a living in it. We enjoy watching it. We enjoy our, The fighters enjoy fighting in it. But it is the corporate mainstream. This is the outsider stuff. This is punk rock. This is, this is something creative. Uh, the fights are different. The fights are flashy. The fights are very, very, the word, you know, there's words that we use a lot. Dynamic. What does that mean? Well, it's, it, it, it has a lot of variation. Right. And there's a lot of variation. And boss is also the coolest guy ever. Like nobody's had too much boss rooting in any show ever. I'll tell you, being around him is even really, really inspiring. And yeah, George, Leoto. And uh, it's yeah, the, at the root, the artistry of the combat is what it's about anyways. And, the, and these are brilliant fights. But yeah, the, the story, the the uh, the other elements, the CGI, all of that is changing trying to do something in a different way that is somewhat commodified we, we kind of do the same thing all the time in fighting and, and partly it's because we love that thing but it's, it's also good to see different things but yeah i think I people agree. should check it out and uh 
And I may not be there till episode four or five of the 12 episode uh, season, but uh, don't let that stop you. <laughs> and also don't stop <laughs> watching it when I show up. Fair points. Well, you, you talk about, you know, new, unique, uh, different things. Uh, you know, when we originally got together, we were going to talk about Karate Combat, and we talked about that, but then you slip in Game Bread Fighting Championship as well. Now, I got to ask you about this because I was on vacation last week. I was spending yeah. some time with my family, so I yeah. didn't get to see it, unfortunately. So I'm not speaking from a position where I can analyze what I saw, but I wanted to ask you about it. I mean, what was mm -hmm. your biggest impression of Bare Knuckle MMA? And I think the question was, how would it affect the game, right? I mean, I think a lot of people were saying, you know, grappling probably going to be a little bit easier without the gloves getting in the way, but does the striking change a little bit the same way we've seen in bare-knuckle boxing that you can't strike the same way you do in a traditional boxing match? So I guess overall, what were your impressions yeah. of watching bare-knuckle MMA? Assuming, I don't know, maybe you had seen bare-knuckle MMA yeah. before. I never had. So uh, yeah. wh what was your impression of it? Certainly not modern, right? Like early Valley Tudo. There were sure. times where you know we're not wearing gloves, but that's a completely different game than what we see yeah. today as it changes, ever changing, you know. Um, yeah, there was a lot of cool. Like I know it was it was put to Jorge Masvidal, it's his show, and the the visceral nature is I think what motivated him to do it. But of course, as a nerd, for me, like the variation is what I'm interested in. And and kind of everything changes you know at a at a low level you know how long you you've been doing broadcasting 25 years like a long time right <laughs> long time. you know 25 years ago somebody would be like this is the mic this is the camera talk to a guy right but now there are subtleties to it that you can't even explain to somebody who hasn't been doing broadcasting for 20 years and even some things you never verbalize that you just know and it's the same thing with fighting on the surface this is a right hand this is a left hook this is a choke but you take at, at this level where it's all subtle and sophisticated for a high level fighter the small change changes everything so we remove the gloves let's just talk about punching someone with our fist there are 27 bones in the human hand and 14 of them there are 14 places of connection that we call um, uh, knuckles. Really, only these two should ever make contact, right? All these bones are very fragile. Uh, even when you hit sometimes, sorry, sometimes like on the angle of these ones, these bones become damaged. Uh, the bones of the wrist, This there's a capsule around. Like, this is all fragile stuff, man. So the glove protects the weapon as well. So we gotta be uh, really concise with those two knuckles when we make contact. And fighting is not all that concise. See, it's moving quickly, somebody's trying to hit you, you got somebody against the fence, your own heart rate goes up and you start throwing these punches, you hit on a weird angle. So, you, so over time, bare knuckle boxing and bare knuckle mixed martial arts, you must become much more precise. You also become a little more like, hey, maybe I don't want to throw as many punches. Now that sound that doesn't sound as exciting on first listen, but then when you realize that, I mean, these guys were very cut up. They were very, very, very affected by the bone on bone, but it becomes up over time in particular, I, I commentate bare knuckle boxing in London for BKB. And you see how the great fighters, Jimmy Sweeney, like the really elite guys who have grown up in the art of bare knuckle boxing, they are very precise. They tried it. The goal would be never get hit in the head and hit him three times, seven times, nine times and win the fight uh, by knocking him out. Uh, also, you never want to make contact anywhere up here. You really want to make contact only in these areas. And again, that is very difficult to do in the duress. So we got a lot happening. Then, and Dan Lambert, my partners were uh, 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 a friend, Mart Martucci and Dan Lambert. And, and Dan Lambert was sitting there the whole time. We talked a lot of nerdy stuff, you know, graps. Or, um, when you wear a glove, there is, I got one right here. When you wear a glove, there is like a little lip that comes into the bottom, right? And, and you don't hear about this a great deal, but in the gym, this is an everyday aspect. And in fights, this is an everyday aspect. This doesn't get discussed that much, but at the edge of the glove, this is like a baseball bat grip. You see that every night when people are fighting in MMA. Well, that's gone. Little things like that are now gone. Also, doesn't look like much, but at the difference of a really high level fighting, this space, is a lot different than this space. 
you know, what is that half, a, half an inch on one side, half an inch on the other? It's an inch. It's a lot of space. That's a lot different. Also, you want to get that in the space. This is a lot larger. So it's affecting a lot of things. How you, you go to choke somebody with this, this is a big bulky thing. Not to you and I, but to Damien and Maya, it's a very different to somebody elite. Now you take that out, this thing just slides right in. So, so many things, right? Like, if you like those aspects of fighting, uh, this is on and on and on. It just keeps going, right? And, uh, and a lot of this over, for us over time, uh, we're going to continue to see these spots and the fighters start to notice these things. There's little things. I once saw a fighter, um, and th this is off topic, but he he was trying to get his his glove in and he and it was in maybe the first 45 seconds of a fight and i swear i saw him he was it was joe dirksen so he had like 60 fights at the time i saw him use his hand to take some of the vaseline off of the eye of the guy and then slide it under like this fighting is such a high level technical thing and again when we talk about say karate combat or we're doing something like game bread uh, fighting championship we can now we can now insert some of these topics in because it isn't the mainstream sports presentation of fighting that has to be a particular way. We now have this sort of open open area where we can have brand new conversations about how karate works in space, how bodies move. We can have conversations about what it is, what this weapon really is, and and it really allows that. And for me, you know, the more. I can follow curiosity and the, the, my odd little passions, the happier that I am. That's awesome. By the way, solid Bellator product placement, by the way, that was well done there. Yeah, for yeah. You there, but yeah, that sits up top over there. That wasn't even in the thing, but I, I was like, yeah, I got a glove. <laughs> yeah, gotta get all the brands family, in. man. Yeah. I'm really thankful for Bellator. Like they are, that's my, I, I do get to cover and I do cover the UFC for sports center in Canada on like, you know, sports television, but Bellator, uh, my work with Bellator, they literally just go, you know, Hey, here's some fights. What do you want to do with it? Do your thing. You know, like, That's which awesome. is, uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it, and I'm so grateful right now, man. Like I get to spend my days just doing shit. I love <laughs> some of you, you yeah. know what it's like. Ah, oh, it's the best. It's it's the cliche, but if you love what you're doing, right, it's it's never work. It's a cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason. So let me let me That's ask right. you. Uh, and you brought up so many great points about how the 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 bare knuckle aspect changes things. So let me ask you: Do you feel like? there's a future to that as being mainstream as that's the way we should be moving? Or do you feel like, I mean, you understand how the public reacts to this sort of thing, mm -hmm. right? You, there's going to be more cuts. There's probably going to be more handbrakes. Yeah. Is it too, is it too out there and fringe for the public to ever accept it as the mainstream? Or do you think maybe that's a, a, a place we need to be working towards? That's a really, really, really good question. And I, and I know, you know, as we're trying to figure these things out, Sometimes the answer is already there. Like there was no place, there was no space for BKB or Bare Knuckle FC, you know, Game Bread fighting. Like five years ago, there was no gap for this. So why is that? Well, one, there's an audience. And it is, and again, this is not a criticism. This is my observation that I believe is factual. And I think there's plenty of evidence to, to support it. The UFC is our coke or mcdonald's or whatever now like that is our mainstream thing that's many of a big chunk of the people who first were the audience now that chunk is older but there are younger versions of the same thing they like non-mainstream things they like edgy things they like things that that their parents didn't like you know if you're a 14 year old kid people are like how could this kid like triller well his dad likes chocolate l he's gotta like something different right like that the world when your goal is to be the mainstream to be on espn to like have everybody in suits be taken you know observed like the nfl to to be brand first I'm not knocking the UFC. I'm gainfully employed on TSN analyzing the big fights, and I love it. But you, that approach created mainstreamed a thing that was not mainstream. When that happens, and we've seen this zillions of times in, in culture, punk rock, grunge, you know, outsider art, um, Banksy, like all of these things happen when the thing that used to be edgy becomes very you know, like structured and, and formulaic, 
And then there's room for edgy stuff. There was no room for bare knuckle fighting only five years ago. But as you become, as you as you become the Coke or the Pepsi or the McDonald's of your field, you, I mean, Budweiser's going through the same thing, you know? Where the fuck did craft beer come from? That wasn't a thing seven years ago. Now it's the thing. It was because there was a mainstreaming, a very commodification of the big brands. And that will happen. I don't care if you're in fighting. I don't care if you're in cell phones. I don't care what, what business you're in. If you create a brand first identity, over time people are like, well, I like other shit. And so now there's enough of those people clearly that feel under, under, you know, serviced through the mainstream, you know, HBO boxing, UFC, mixed martial arts, whatever, that there is now a culture for it. So it's already happening. Uh, it's already happening a lot. Uh, so and so now we're looking around, we're like, how did this happen? And how much bigger can it get? And then, you know, inevitably, if we're going to look at these things cyclic, martial arts does that, everything does that. We'll be like, well, even if they got big, all they would eventually do is become more mainstream. And then later a door would be open for some other thing to come along, right? This is the nature of martial arts, of art, music, of sport, of business. It's, it's the nature of the world we live in. That's interesting, man, to think about. You, know, you make some great points. Uh, with that in mind, I guess, let me ask you. I mean, I know this was the debut event, and you're not necessarily behind the doors making executive decisions. You're out front putting on the presentation. But did you get a sense of where Jorge wants to take this thing moving forward? I mean, is this a like a real mm. passion that he wants to blow it up? Or is this kind of a, hey, let's have some fun and do some things in, you know, outside of fighting? What What is the plan? Do you know? Yeah, that's. Uh, I think both. I think that's the goal and, and that's the world we live in right now. Like, you're like, how is that 17 year old like driving a Ferrari, but like do with a YouTube channel, they're like doing something they're passionate about, curious about building on love doing. And if you love doing something, you work really hard at it, it might work. Right. And it's the same sort of thing. Like on one hand, they were like, man, these fights were so raw and visceral. And I had this old school element. On another hand, they were talking about a show uh, in, August, What's, what are we in June? Yeah, show in August uh, that we were all discussing doing. And another one in the fall, uh, you meet the, the people working on it. There were some guys who have been involved in icon fights and island fights who are really good at the kind of developing the sort of behind the scenes elements to it. So that was happening. Um, and, uh, you know, a lot of fighters seem to want to uh, be fighting, which is wild because it you know mma seems dangerous enough for most of us <laughs> but uh, and some of them even this is a funny story one of the the guys that was fighting his name has escaped me for a moment but uh i was like he, he took the fight on two days notice i was like how did you take the fight on two days notice he's like well i'm crashing on jorge's couch and somebody was out and he and jorge was like listen man you're in <laughs> and, and so but that that nature in a world of over strategized and over structured and over organized world the the sort of true nature of that is very appealing and very real you know we kind of like real right now you know authentic like no bullshit and this is definitely that but yeah i think i think they're pretty serious about if we you and i are hanging out hopefully in a lobby bar at, at an event somewhere and you know we're talking about their show number 30 um and i think that's that's the plan for sure that's awesome, man. Exciting stuff. Well, they've got some star power behind him, to say the least, with Jorge, man. He uh, he, he moves the needle in whatever he's doing. And, uh, boy, they had great matchmaking. And what an incredible main event. Two athletes to put together in bare-knuckle MMA. I mean, it was just sharp all the way around. I'm going to have to catch a replay of it. I'm just getting caught up after a few days' vacation. I'll definitely have to catch a replay of it. So, You'll tell me, it. Robin, you got, you got you got Game Bread Fighting Championship. You got Karate Combat. You got Bellator. What, what, what else do people need to know? If they, if, they, if they need more Robin Black in their life, where, where, where do they go to get it? What, what else is going on? Um, yeah, I, I've got a couple. I had a conversation today with somebody um, about a show in an arena. You know, there are, there are other individuals right now. I mean, you know what else? I don't know if you've seen Anderson Silva fight uh, on the weekend, but this train is going, right? Like these fight people are putting on fights. People are putting on shows there, and some of them are going to be here in in five years or ten years. Karate Combat's going to be massive. To if it isn't this season, it will be next or the one after. They are creating a sport. 
uh, Jorge is creating sort of a visceral element that he is that he's putting together. Bare knuckle boxing is a you know when I go to to commentate it in England, they have full arenas of people you know pre and mid COVID and hopefully now post COVID. Uh, there people have this this desire for different flavors right now. They really do, and uh, and there and so there's a lot of it. Um, but yeah, I've, I've got a few other ones. I mean, my my root passion is the making, you know, analysis videos, one minute breakdowns, whatever of fighting. Oh, uh, um, I also am making those for a, a site called Wave TV, who has like four million subscribers, and Haymakers, which is kind of their fighting version. And we're now kind of trying to make artistically slightly different breakdowns that bring in elements of life and philosophy and the lessons that you learn from fighting. To me, we are entering the martial arts era, not necessarily moving out of the MMA era, uh, but MMA is not going to just simply dominate like maybe it has for the last while. I think we are moving into the martial arts era, you know, whether that's karate, like karate combat. I mean, I was in, in Myanmar before they had, you know, the, the, um, the turmoil that they got right now, uh, commentating a, a thousand year old martial art called that way that has headbutts and bare knuckle. You know, uh, people are interested in sumo right now. Like we are entering the martial arts connoisseur era. And, uh, you know, I've just been quietly sitting there trying to learn as many different things about it, follow my passion, learn, you know, uh, have, have turn over the rocks and learn the little things and do it in an honest way where I'm trying to, and it feels like a pretty good time to be, to be obsessed with, with all of the little elements of, of fighting uh, because there's so much of it happening. And I think it's, you know, we're seeing a little decentralization. The last 20 years, we saw kind of a centralization, you know, whether it's HBO or different boxing organizations, UFC and, and mixed martial arts. I feel like we're seeing a decentralization of that right now. And that's pretty exciting if you're a martial arts nerd. Well, it's funny. I mean, as you're sitting there talking about it, I think, I mean, it, it almost just makes sense, right? We fell in love with a sport that brought all the martial arts together. Why would you not then turn it around and fall in love with the individual martial arts on their own as well? For sure. For sure. And there, there's a weird element where once we brought them together because we said overly believing in a single doctrine or, or a collection of dogma karate, kung fu, boxing, whatever, just overly believing in that wasn't going to work. But there's a little bit of, we're hitting a moment, you know, the last five years, a moment where a lot of people who practice, train, study, you know, present, commentate, coach, us, whatever, present mixed martial arts, we think it's a thing. We think it's a dogmatic doctrine driven thing you use boxing you use jujitsu you use wrestling we you know well sure you can uh, kick uh, with karate and te uh, taekwondo uh, things from the outside but really what mma is and uh, is a removing of the barriers between it's not like we would at first we felt like we had to combine boxing and wrestling and kickboxing these things now what we're doing is removing any barrier between any of them realizing that they were overly structured concepts you have to develop an elite level artist or athlete through some systemic approach you have to so we'll teach you to box and we'll teach you to wrestle but over time michael chandler never boxes or wrestles we say he does but his nervous system doesn't care if you call that penetration step a jab or a double leg takedown. Michael Chandler's nervous system doesn't care what language we use because over time he is dissembling. And, and most of these elite athletes are dissembling the belief systems around these individual things. And all of a sudden we're going, wait a second, martial arts is just martial arts. Uh, MMA, as a mixed martial arts, which is a sport that we love, uh, created a particular paradigm that implied that it was the, you know, a purification of it, but it actually didn't come together that way. It came together by combining different arts and saying, which one's better? Oh, well, they're all pretty good. Okay, well, we'll do all of them. And then you do them long enough and you realize that you just remove all the lines. What is this, a, is this jab boxing or Muay Thai or kickboxing or karate? It's none of those things. It's my body expressing movement, right? That's why I say I, I love to study human movement because the idea that this jab is somehow has to be considered 
any of those paradigms is complete horseshit. It's me moving my body in a way through deliberate practice and study and the freedom of expression over time became a movement. We needed to give it a name. We call it a jab. In Japan, it's not called a jab. Whatever word they use is not a literal translation of a jab. It is a word to express the movement, right? But these are the limitations of language. And if you do anything long enough, you're like, holy shit, I need more words. Uh, I guess that'll be part of my job for the next 20 years is figuring out how to explain these. Because everything I just might have said right now, a large percentage of people will either think it's complete horse shit or not understand or be very angry with me and say that I just spout nonsense. Uh, and if that's so, it's now my, that's my fault. It will be my job to spend the next five or 10 years to find better ways to express that so that it doesn't sound like horse shit. But this is the gig, right? This is what we're doing. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Well, listen, you always bring such a unique perspective to it, man. So I appreciate you uh, sharing all of it today. I don't want to take any more of your time because I know quarantine is just incredibly exciting and, and there's probably just so much you'd just rather be doing right now than, than talking martial arts. <laughs> nope, there isn't. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, man, it's really good to see you. Uh, there's... There's a collection of people when you're out in the world who are always doing their job at a high level and killing it that you don't realize you miss seeing around until you don't see them around. So it's nice to see you, man. Thank you for hanging with me. I've really enjoyed it.